Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, if this is your first time, thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, today's video is a new jellyfish tutorial, uh, fluid jellyfish. The last one I posted, um, I had several people uh, complain about the audio quality, so hopefully this one will come across better. Uh, this is a two foot by four foot canvas, so I added some oceanness into it as well. Here's the tools I used, you guys. This is a little sponge on the left for removing some paint. Uh, the two sort of pointy tipped ones are kind of a hard foam. There's sort of a plastic dotting tool and then the resin spreading tool this with the serrated edges. Here's the colors of paint I used, a uh, phthalo blue, island blue, um, and then there's a light metallic blue, a pearlescent metallic white, and then a really, really light baby blue um, that is not metallic and black as well. So uh, here you'll see just a sped up version of me laying down some paint. Uh, the white first, because I'm going to work on the ocean wave. Um, and then some of that baby blue, not the metallic, and then the island blue. And then I go in with that resin spreader here and just start spreading the paint around to try and... At first I was thinking I wanted it to just kind of look like a splashy, sort of the top of an uh, aquarium tank, maybe. Um... I didn't know exactly how to do what my mind's eye was seeing, so I kind of played with it. Went in with the straw, I wanted to sort of soften up the lines. I was kind of seeing how the paint was gonna react. And, uh, and then you'll see here, I just start kind of working with it. Nothing particularly special so far as techniques are concerned. So uh, now I want to kind of get that wave look. The water looks kind of splashy, so I'm adding a little more of that island blue. And again with that resin spreading tool. And the straw to sort of soften up some of those edges and lines that, that the tool leaves. And now I'm dipping my paintbrush in some of that excess paint and kind of splashing it up there. And then taking the straw to soften it up. And then I'm taking that dotting tool here and just kind of blending this around a little so that it looks like it, you know, comes up and <laughs> blends together and not just a huge splash on the top. Again, just kind of tweaking the details of it according to what I'm seeing. So now I'm going in with the phthalo blue and I'm trying to uh, blend. My idea here was to get sort of a gradient from the island blue down into the phthalo blue and then into the black. And for some reason here, um, I wound up adding just way too much of the island blue as I was editing this video and watching it, there are many times where I was like, wait, what are you doing? Why did you do that? <laughs> so, uh, so if it gets frustrating for you as well, uh, I'm right there with you. So uh, the island blue was really taking over. The, uh, the phthalo blue was sinking right to the bottom of it. Um, so I should have just continued adding a bunch of the phthalo blue and maybe scraping some of that island blue off. But for whatever reason, I kept trying to just push the phthalo blue up into that island blue, which didn't really work all that well. I was torching it because there was a lot of bubbles in the paint. I don't have any silicone in this mix because my goal wasn't really to get cells. Um, and you'll, you're always going to get a few anyway. <clears throat> so you can see that I'm trying to put that phthalo blue up there into the island blue. And it keeps disappearing. I really should have just scraped some of the island blue off. But whatever. You live, you learn. 
I already have new ideas of how I want to make uh, another version of this, a better version of this. So I'll share with you all the things I feel like I learned from it as we go. I had a little too much of the phthalo blue on there, so I just pulled it to the edge so that I could save some of it. So yes, in hindsight, I would not have added as much of the island blue. Probably pulled some off and worked that phthalo blue up closer to the top of the water scene. Um, I didn't want to get too much of the phthalo blue though either because the jellyfish seemed to work much better in the black paint than the blue paint. So I wanted to do most of the jellyfish work in the black paint. So again, I'm trying to get sort of a gradient blend here from the phthalo blue into the black using that resin spreading tool to just kind of blend them back and forth. A tilt here, a tilt there. So now I'm going to start working on our jellyfish. So I've decided I want the very first one to kind of come up into the blue so that all the rest can lay down in the black. Um, so I used that sponge and pulled up some of the paint. And I probably, in hindsight, added just a little too much of the metallic white there. And then here's some metallic blue. And then I just take that dotting tool, swirl it all around come around the outside and create sort of the, the edge or the line of your jellyfish. I come up with a straw here and unfortunately block this with my head, but there's a couple more jellyfish to come, so we'll get to it. But this straw kind of softens it up. And at this point I realize I have a little too much paint in this jelly, so um, I'm trying to pull it down. That's one of the other things I've learned, you guys, is um, the jellyfish that I do on the tile. Uh, I, I prefer doing it on the tile, on the hard surface, to the canvas. Um, the canvas just holds the paint differently. It also dries differently. On the tile, uh, the jellyfish maintain all the details of the lines really well. Once it dries on the canvas, that texture of the canvas comes through and it kind of uh, softens the details. Now there you'll notice I pulled some of the black paint up in there. Um, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking when I did that. Uh, in the last jellyfish video, I got a really cool 3D effect by going back and forth with the, with uh, creating the tentacles. Um, but with this, I wasn't thinking about the fact that my jelly's up in the blue paint and I just pulled some of that black paint in there. So, chose the next spot for my next jellyfish. And we're gonna go in with some drips of white, the metallic pearlescent white, and our really light metallic blue. And again, take that dotting tool, just swirl it all around in the shape of our jelly. Start creating the, the line or the outline. <clears throat> this dotting tool is really cool because it the way that it blends when you go around the outside of it actually creates what looks like this sort of see-through uh, jelly that's catching the light. You were able to better see in this one when I took the straw to it how it softened the jelly up. Also what you can't see off camera is I have a little piece of plastic over there that I've put some of the white and light blue uh, metallic paint on and I'm dipping this dotting tool into that and bringing it back over to put in the tentacles. I just pulled off some of the white paint with a q-tip out of the blue jelly here um, and re-added some of the phthalo blue because I felt like it was just didn't have enough of that phthalo blue showing through the jelly. So I'm making another jelly off, off to the side over here. And it's just the same steps as before. Uh, I remove some of the paint with the sponge 
And then I go in and add a few drops of the metallic white and a couple of drops of the light blue and create the, the shape of my jellyfish and then go in and start adding tentacles. But basically I just keep manipulating the the shape, the lines of the shape of the jelly and add more tentacles and continue going back around the outline and add more tentacles until it looks right. And here I'm attempting the very last big giant jelly at the bottom. And it turns out I actually pulled up a little too much paint for this. Uh, by the time I got to the last jellyfish, this black paint at the bottom had started to thicken up a little bit. And so um, it made it a little harder to move the paint around or it just it just wasn't as fluid. Um, and so I had to add more paint here to kind of get it to start blending uh, more the way I wanted it to. And you'll see over the course of this, here I am blowing it with a straw. You'll see that I continue to go back and add more and more paint to this jelly. Sometimes again, um, watching this video, I'm yelling at myself, what are you doing? It looks good. Stop. But I keep going. I'll just keep manipulating that paint, blowing it again with the straw, working the line of the jelly until I get it looking like I feel like it's supposed to look. So I'm still feeling like there's just too much black in this, like that the white and the blue aren't standing out enough. Um, so you'll see me go in and add even more paint here pretty soon. Again, dipping the dotting tool into the paint I have on the side to create these tentacles. The problem I was having was that um, this jellyfish was so big that I wasn't really able to get enough paint on this dotting tool to make really long tentacles coming out. So here in a minute, I grab one of those foam tipped um, tools because I can load more paint on those. And more paint into the jelly. Every time I watch this where I'm adding more paint and I'm thinking, no, it was good. But then I add more paint and blow it around a little and keep manipulating. I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, OK, that looks good. It's one of the things that I love about fluid painting, though. You can just keep pushing the paint around and keep pushing it around until you get what you want. So see there I'm using that uh, foam pointed tool to try and get more paint onto the canvas for these tentacles. Now I'm back in with the dotting tool kind of going up and down through the tentacles, pulling the black up and the blue down and the white down so it gives it a more three dimensional look. Again, outlining the edges of the jelly. Continuing to try and make it look the way I want it to look, even though for even though it already looked fine. Stop. <laughs> Fortunately, I did not screw it up and the end product came out all right.
or I'd have been really mad at myself. So the biggest reason that I use that sponge tool in the beginning to pull some of the paint um, is for a couple of reasons. Uh, you don't, obviously you don't want to create a jellyfish that then is going to move and shift and spill um, from your canvas. So, so removing some of the paint first helps keep it into place. It's also one of the reasons that I use the resin spreading tool uh, to lay down my layers of paint because it keeps everything at a pretty even thickness on uh, whatever canvas I'm using and it helps the paint to uh, stay in place and not be as unpredictable with its shifting. So there we go. There you have it. There's the final product. Uh, you'll get to see each one of these jellies a little as we go through them. So things I'm going to do different when the, with the next one, you guys, is I'm going to uh, use wood instead. I really like the flat canvas when I am doing these deliberate pours where I'm trying to create something with detail. Uh, when it dries on a nice flat surface, you get to keep all of the really lovely detail that you see in these jellyfish right now. Um, also, next time I'm going to use a lighter blue than the thalo blue because once it dried, it was really, really dark. And um, in the natural light, you could still see it was a nice deep blue, but in the, uh, in the light of uh, the house, it looked almost like it was black. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to give this one away in my first exclusive Patreon only um, giveaway. Uh, this is a really big one, so I don't know how much it's going to cost to ship. And it's got a cure for a bit before I can um, put like a, a polyurethane uh, or a polyacrylic coat on it to seal it. Um, but I'm thinking this will be my first Patreon giveaway. Uh, as of right now, I have one Patreon subscriber. And my intent, you guys, is to do at least two art giveaways a month. Um, and the hopes just to at least raise enough funds to pay for the art supplies and for the shipping. Because I don't have room to keep all these paintings that I'm doing for these videos. So you guys should just have them, you know. <laughs> anyway, if you go over to patreon.com forward slash Vox Arts um, for $2 a month, you will be entered into every single art drawing I have. And like I said, for now, there's only one person over there and there's one drawing a month that will be specifically for my Patreon subscribers only. There's also other tiers over there, uh, different subscription levels that also come with other benefits from signed and numbered prints to um, being able to use the uh, digital master files um, that I use for my prints. So you could virtually print anything you wanted yourself with them. Um, Anyway, please go check it out because uh, I would love to keep these videos coming and have some place to, you know, unload all the art to. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching.